definitely attain paradise because paradise is for those who have Iman. Iman is such a sign, it is such a status, it is such a nur that Iman, it takes a person into paradise. And people will enter into paradise and they will be people with Iman. But only those people of Iman, of belief will be those who will enter the paradise. And only those people who along with Iman they will also need to have a certificate. And that person who doesn't have that certificate and he doesn't have the attestation, the stamp then he cannot go into paradise. Yes. If he then goes through those challenges and goes through the path, the test, the challenge where then he is accepted, then he can go into paradise. But only that person will go into paradise who has the certificate on top of having Iman. It's essential. In the Quran Hakim, Allah mentions that Jama' in high quantity, rather most of all Allah Ta'ala mentions that group of people who were going to paradise with the certificate. Many places Allah has mentioned that jama, that group of people. Allah has mentioned the Quran. Allah has given examples in the Quran. So which jama, which people will they be? Which group of people will they be? What certificate will it be? What reward is it that the Quran has given to them? Think about it. Who will be those people who will be jannati, who will go into paradise? Will there be people who pray salah? Obviously they'll pray salah, but only that namazi will go into paradise who has this certificate. Will there be hajis who will go into Jannah? Yes, there will be hajis. But only those hajis who will have this certificate of approval. They will go into Jannah. Salah takes into Jannah. Every good deed will take a person of Iman into paradise. But alongside that, in parallel, he must have the certificate of approval. The additional certificate. Only then can he go into paradise. It's a unique point if we uh, study it. So what is it? How important it must be if you think for yourself? How important it must be that many times shaitan, he takes a person off the path. Shaitan, he deviates a person off the path and he stops you from going on the right path. My friends, this is a great month that we are passing through and we are grateful to Allah that until now Allah has given us health and well-being and he's entered us into this month. So in this month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan, Allah, to us, He's given us the tawfiq, the ability. Allah has given us permission, such an ibadah that we sit down and that we can uh, analyze and have concern about our situation. So what is it that will take a person into paradise? Just that certificate of approval. What is the name of that certificate? The muttaqeen. The certificate of the muttaqeen. Uh, there's many places in the Quran Allah has mentioned just one jama, one group of people going to paradise for whom paradise was manufactured, the hoors were created, the palaces were created, the good news has been given. Allah Ta'ala sight, they will see Allah. Who will be those people? The muttaqeen people. The muttaqeen. Such a person who prays salah, who is a muttaqi. Such a haji, who is a muttaqi. In other words, all of the qualities of Islam, you can practice the deeds, but you have to be such a fasting person who is a muttaqi. So this is that jama, that special group of people who will go into paradise, alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. And they will get the rewards of paradise. The muttaqeen, they have been addressed, defined. Who are the muttaqeen? Those people who develop taqwa within them, taqwa. So the muttaqi 
is a person who develops taqwa. We don't know about these things, do we? Because we don't pay attention to these facts. How many times we read Quran? All everybody nowadays, especially in Ramadan, you can count how many times as Allah mentioned the muttaqin in the Quran. Should we bypass this definition? We can't until we, we cannot go into paradise until we become a muttaqi. So we have to understand. The person who is not a muttaqi, then opposition to that is the sinful person. So these are the two opposites. The opposite to a muttaqi is a sinful person. So obviously, if you commit sins, if you do good deeds and you do sins, at the same time Allah say, the first I will clean your sins, after that due to your iman you are going to paradise. If you are sinning. But the muttaqi, the muttaqi alhamdulillah, he will be pure from the sins. Pure from the sins. And that's the definition of taqwa. That's the definition of the muttaqi. Who are the muttaqi people? Those who are pure from the sins, clean from the sins. That's the meaning of taqwa. That's the meaning of taqwa. The Mufassirin, the commentators of the Qur'an have defined that the meaning of the person who has taqwa, a person who has such fear of Allah that whilst he is about to disobey Allah, he stops himself. And this is our test, our challenge, our nafs, our ego, our inner self, it drags us and invites us towards sins, disobedience. This is our test and challenge in life. We're not angels. We're not angels. If we say, oh, we're forced to do wrong, we can't help it, oh, I've done a sin, what can I do? I can't help it. We keep saying that. But this is the challenge and the test of life. Because we don't have the fear inside us, that Allah, what does Allah's Quran say? That Allah says, one day you will come in front of me, and there will be the day of judgment, you will be presented to me, Allah says, and successful will be that person, that when his nafs, it drags him towards disobedience, then he rejects the invitation of his ego and nafs, and due to Allah's fear and khawf, he says, Ya, I have to go to Allah after death. How can I commit this sin? How can I disobey Allah in this way? In other words, when Allah's disobedience invitation comes right at that time when he's feeling strong, he wants to sin. And due to Allah's khawf and fear, he gives the biggest sacrifices. No, I'm not going to commit this sin. I'm not going to commit this sin. That's the enjoyment. That's when a person becomes the true person of Iman, the mu'min, about whom Allah has given good news. So this looks hard. It's easy to pray salah. We pray salah. And it's easy to keep the fast because it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit to pray salah. Every ibadah becomes a habit. Tahajjud you think is hard. If you start praying tahajjud for a few days, after a few days you'll be habitual in praying tahajjud. Alhamdulillah. But the true success for a human being, the big achievement is to save himself from sins and he saves himself from sins due to Allah's khawf. Not due to the fear of the dunya. Even then we'll leave sins due to the fear of dunya. Remember this point as well. Due to people looking, a person leaves sins. Oh no, my wife, what will she say? Oh, I won't talk to women. I won't talk to girls anymore. What will my wife say if she sees this? Oh, I won't do this anymore wrong. What would people say? So who are we afraid of at that time? We're afraid of human beings. So due to human beings, you can leave sin. But this is not their big achievement to leave the sin due to human beings. If you're invited to sin, there's an attraction, you can do it. Nobody's looking. You have the means. Everything's prepared to sin. Then you say, no, my Rabb is unhappy. I'm not going to commit this sin. That's the achievement. That is real Iman. That is Taqwa. Look brothers, this is the life, the challenge of our life. If we make a life like this, then Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So how do I make my life, uh, life like this? That's what I need to think about. Allah, with His grace and mercy, with His fadl, He can allow me to come into this position. So brothers, do we want to live a life like this? Do you want to be a muttaqi or not? Tell me. Yes, we do. So Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheen amnu, kutiba alaykum musayamu, katma kutiba ala ladheen min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. Subhanallah. Allah says, don't worry, don't be scared, don't be afraid. I will give you such a month, a yam, such days, such an ibadah I will give to you a worship action Allah says that is unique and separate from all the other ibadahs that you do. This ibadah in this month it will be ajib and unique ibadah. And the special quality of this ibadah will be such that the whole year long, 11 months before this month, you didn't do it, you won't do ibadah, and you committed sins before this month came. You committed sins, you didn't pray salah, you didn't do good, but Allah says, I'm your Rabb, and I love you for one reason, Allah says. I, don't, I looked over your sins, your deficiencies, your downfalls. Allah says, I knew everything what you were doing was wrong. Alongside ibadah, worship, 
and even without ibadah you committed sin. But even despite all of that, Allah says, but because you are people of Iman and you believe in me, Allah says, doesn't matter what level of Iman you have, Allah says, so I've prepared for you a solution. Such a month I've given to you, Allah says, and in that month if you, if you observe this ibadah in the right way, then taqwa will come into you for a fact. Most definitely. Amazing is such a great name Allah Ta'ala has given to us. So who is saying this now? Allah is saying this to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a solution. Allah, Allah says, it's my Jannah, my world, everything is mine. So what a great statement that the fast, what does it do to a human being? What a great reward it gives him. What does it make him? It makes a Muslim a muttaqi. The fast does. The fast. So you understand the definition of muttaqi or you don't understand? Let me repeat now. So a muttaqi is that person who due to the fear of Allah, he doesn't commit a sin. That's a muttaqi. Very simple. There are many lengthy definitions, explanations, tafsir. But I'll summarize this ocean in one statement for you. One statement. Yes? So if you want to see that you are muttaqi, the muttaqi doesn't have horns on his hand. He's not a kutab or a ghaus or a wali Allah. Every normal Muslim is a muttaqi who due to Allah's fear, he leaves the sins. He is the muttaqi. Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's the fact. So how does a fast make me mutaki? Allah says, I've given you the ibadah of fasting that it will for sure make you the mutaki. <laughs> if you observe the fast in the style Allah Sala tells us to. Allah says, give me your reward. So this is the, the reward of fast. Every day we will attain paradise. In the hadith is stated, every day Jannah is decorated. Every day. And Jannah is one thing. And then to decorate Jannah. SubhanAllah, imagine somebody is beautiful. Yes, so why do you need to improve the beauty of the person, apply more makeup? Men and women do that. Even though the person's handsome and beautiful already, the Haseen, beautiful person, Allah says, I will decorate. Is there anything more beautiful than Jannah? There's nothing that can compare to Jannah already. Allah Ta'ala says, that every day for the fasting people, every day I decorate and make Jannah more beautiful. And Allah says, do you know that in this Jannah, those people will come who fasted in Ramadan? Subhanallah. So we think that fasting that we are keeping, that we have just left food and water. No. He who observes the fast as a muttaqi. Not a fast, you're fasting, there's music, singing, you shave your beards, cut your beards, there's no parda, the woman's not observing hijab and their sins, and we're looking at women and girls, and the girls are looking at boys and men, and everything's happening. And haram we don't know, and we don't know about halal, and we think we're fasting. No, and we're all happy, oh we're fasting, we're going into paradise. Brothers, Islam is a straightforward deen, straightforward religion. Very simple. It's not the case that uh, that's why the previous nations of the previous prophets, they followed their deen according to their desires. They said, where's Christmas come from and all these celebrations? Where have all these things come from, these traditions and the cultures? Where have they come from? Just like in this religion of Islam today, thousands of new things have come. Thousands of new things. Wrong actions, wrong practices, traditions, cultures. Am I right or am I wrong? Tell me. Yes? Now, Islam, that's all we've got left to our deen. It's just a small bit of practice we do and the rest is tradition and cultures. All traditions and cultures, do this, do that, you're forgiven. If you do this, you're forgiven, etc. In other words, all the things we do are cultures and traditions. Previous nations used to do this. Allah says, no. So we, Allah says, that this was the Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, it started from him. And until this ummah, the deen has come. Through the generations. And it's one message that will take us into paradise. Doesn't matter whichever Nabi's ummah you belong to. But it's a condition first, you must have taqwa. The person who is disobeys Allah can never go into paradise. Doesn't matter which ummah, Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, any prophet's ummah, Cannot enter the verse. The same thing, the same message has continued till today to this ummah. The fine, you are big qawm, Allah says, you are a big nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but my condition is the same. That's from Adam alayhi salam until now, Allah says. That if you are muttaqis and you have taqwa, then the doors of paradise are open for you. But, in this ummah, Allah has given the fadl and the grace. That the way we have been given Ramadan, the previous nations never got Ramadan like this. Remember this. This gift of Ramadan, do you understand my point? So what I'm making, you don't understand. So this is not a minor thing, the month of Ramadan. That's why it says in Hadith, that the person who with taqwa, with, who's a muttaqi, and he spends the month of Ramadan, 
then just this Ramadan, Ramadan isn't just Salamat for him, it doesn't come with the message of Ramadan for him, rather the rest of the year to come after Ramadan will be Salamat for him, will be safety for him, in other words Allah has given a big guarantee, that the rest of the year after Ramadan as well, Alhamdulillah, I'm giving you the good news of paradise, Allah says. So Ramadan goes, then you get the good news of, Ramadan, of Jannah, but the condition is don't waste Ramadan, Allah says. Don't waste Ramadan. How does a person waste Ramadan? Do you understand what I'm saying? How does a person waste Ramadan? The person who doesn't have taqwa, he wastes Ramadan. What is taqwa? The person who saves himself from the sin due to fear of Allah. What do we do? Ramadan comes, we think, let's put the prayer mats out, prayer, salah. Look brothers, understand this point. Salah, we can pray the rest of the year. We pray in Ramadan. Don't you pray Salah the rest of the year? You can recite the Quran the rest of the year. We recite before Ramadan as well, Quran. Tahajjud, we pray before Ramadan. Ishraq, we pray before Ramadan. Allah's Zikr, we do the whole of the year before Ramadan. We do du'as. So what's the special quality of Ramadan? Ramadan hasn't come for these worship actions. Say Subhanallah. Yes, I'm trying to explain to you in a simple way so you understand. Oh my friends, I prayed so much Quran, I prayed so many nafil, because Ramadan came. My brothers, Ramadan has not say, Subhanallah, I have promised to Allah that I will not sin ever. I will not lie. I will not backbite. I will not consume haram. In my heart, I won't have enmity against anyone. I won't have malice against anybody. I won't have enmity against anyone. I won't consume somebody's rights. I will observe the rights of my mother, of my wife, of my children. My Muslim brother, I will consider him as my brother. I will fulfill his rights due to Allah. This is the name of Ramadan. This is the definition of Ramadan. Say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Whoever passed Ramadan like this, about him is the good news. That this is the person who passed Ramadan correctly. For him is a guarantee. The rest of the year, even if he passes away, but he's a Jannati. Why? Because this year he passed Ramadan correctly. And the title given to him is the Muttaqi. La lakum taqtaqoon. Subhanallah. So shall I explain to you another point? You'll say, what side of Ramadan is this? Yes, Ramadan makes a person a mutaki. I'll give you the definition of a muti again. What is that? Allah's khawf due to Allah's fear, due to being afraid of Allah, you do not commit the disobedience to Allah. That's the definition of the Allah, I won't do this Allah because you'll be unhappy. For that you don't need a witness, not that four people are looking at you and you don't sin. Or due to someone's looking at you, if I smoke here, people watch me, let me go into the corner and smoke the cigarette. No, this is not the case. Whether it's a corner, darkness, light or in public, Allah's khawf, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Do you understand the definition of mutaki? So now, how do we commemorate in Ramadan? Now all of us have kept the fast, even the small kids have kept the fast. You can try your best, even if the child is alone. Even if the child is alone, but the child will not eat the toffee sweet. He will not consume the sweet because I've kept the fast, the child will say. He won't drink water, why? Even the sinful, most sinful of the people in the world, he's got him on. He's kept the fast. He never prayed salah before. He never. Done. You can try and force him. He sat on his own. Doesn't matter how bad he's feeling. But he says, Allah will be unhappy. I'm not going to break my fast before the time. Is this not the case? It's okay. The biggest quality that the fast creates is what? What does the fast create? Allah's khawf, the fear is generated. The due to Allah's fear, he will not commit the sin. Subhanallah. That's why, that's why it's defined that the fast makes a person a muttaqi, develops the person into a muttaqi. How? That when a person, alhamdulillah, when he thinks, and in this style, the whole of the month of Ramadan, he passes in that way, that today Ramadan has come. Don't run after ibadah. Okay, that's fine. There is tawab, reward. But don't just run after the worship. He will get more reward. Remember, the whole of Ramadan, the tawab only, he will get who generates taqwa in his life. Not that person who listens to music, singing, and modesty. The person who commits sins, he won't get the reward of Ramadan. No way. No way. Already they're sinning. How can it be mutaki? Only that person will get the reward for extra worship who is careful. Like a person who is a sinner. Oh, Ramadan's come now. Now I won't commit a sin. And then he tries his best. During Ramadan, during the fast, then no, yeah, the question doesn't arise. Ramadan says, I'm not going to break my fast. I don't want to spoil my fast. The person who passes Ramadan with this caution, he'll develop a quality that even after Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, taqwa will come into that person. Taqwa will come into the person, my brothers. We have to do dhikr. The time is short. This is a very good topic. I could tell you more detail. So I'll summarize and explain to you so we understand that don't waste this Ramadan. 
So understand now the message of Ramadan, inshallah you'll have understood that only that person will go into paradise who has taqwa in him. And for that Allah Ta'ala has given us this month of Ramadan so we can generate taqwa inside us. Allah says, don't keep any fast that this mixed with sins. No, immediately when you want to sin, say no way, bring khawf into your heart. Develop that fear inside, totally this way, that Allah Ta'ala, my Rabb is watching me, I cannot commit this sin. I cannot commit this sin. Then, inshallah, during Ramadan, you can do ibadah, the rest of the year will come, hajj, umrah, we run, we purchase flight tickets, someone's running umrah, hajj. Brothers, make one promise, everywhere, whether it's hajj or umrah, your hajj and umrah will be accepted, but don't commit the sins, learn to shun the sins. First do this. Definitely do Umrah, do Hajj, do Itikaf, do Ibadah. But the base, the start is do those deeds through which you can get a benefit. So you attain some reward. So what does shaitan do? He deceives us. Ramadan's come. Let's run after Ibadah. Do this and do this Ibadah. Everywhere you'll hear people saying, oh, is this not what you're hearing? Soon as Ramadan starts, shaitan tricks us. But this fakir, this humble servant tells you another message. This fakir's Words, whatever comes in my heart, I've shared, shared with you. May Allah give me the tawfiq as well. Because I am the person in need the most. And those brothers who are listening, here, wherever in the world anyone's listening, understand the message of Ramadan. If you want to earn and attain Ramadan, then the guarantee is coming for the rest of the year. For the rest of the year, you'll be a jannati as well. What is salamat? Salamat isn't that you'll get something else. What is salamat? The rest of the year, you'll be salamat. You are salim, you've got salamat. You are saved from what? From Jahannam, from the hellfire. The rest of the year, you attain Jannah and you can openly enter into the doors of paradise. One year, one year after Ramadan, this is if you pass this month of Ramadan the correct way, may Allah give us all the tawfiq, I mean, recite the root. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد اللهم اغفر لنا ولنا ولنا حسرة وجنة خطأنا ولنا اللهم ما قدمت ما أخذت ما أسرت ما أنت ما أسرت ما تعلمي أنت المقدم وأنت المقدر لا إله إلا أنت اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وارضعنا وتقبل منا وادخلنا جنة وجاتا من النار لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله ونسرق جنة ونعوذ بك من النار يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نبينا صدقين شهداء وصالحين وحسن أولئك ربيك اللهم إنا نسلك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استغاث منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستعان عليك الملاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ربنا حبنا من أسفاجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين وجهنا للمتقين إماما اللهم رب العلم وكما ربيان الصغيرة اللهم اغفر لنا ولا ولدينا واستغذينا ومشايخنا وجميع من المؤمنين المسلمين والمسلمات الله يهو منا موكلا مديك يا رب والإخوان الذين سبقونا من إيمان ولا تزل في قلوبنا من الذين آمنوا ربنا إنك فضيل سبحان ربك رب العزة